Hello, my flock. The Bad Raven here. We are going to do our spoiler review of The Last Jedi, Star Wars The Last Jedi. If you've seen <laughs> the, the few videos I've made already, me and Andrew made a question mark spoiler review before we had actually watched the movie. <laughs> So I don't think I've uh, given anything away. So this is going to be spoilers. So if, stop watching right now if you don't want to know absolutely nothing about the movie. But we made a spoiler review before we watched the movie. And he was explaining, Andrew was explaining how he saw the poster and how we saw the, the uh, trailers before that and how we thought, and like I said, the spoilers here, that we thought that uh, Daisy Riddler's, Ridley's character of um, Ray was going to be evil in this one, that she was going to kill Luke Skywalker, and she was going to kill Princess Leia, and this was going to turn Kylo to the good side, and he would be the last Jedi, and that's how we thought that the movie was going to go. We were dead wrong. Now, besides Luke actually dying of his own will there because of the Force, overdoing the Force or whatever, it didn't end up that way. So I have to say, our, our being able to read the trailers and the poster didn't work out too good. Which I like the way this movie went instead. So we'll start out there. We went and watched this on the Thursday opening. And you know, if you saw the video where we actually, our non spoiler video of the Star Wars review, you've seen us at our local theater at the Tri-County Cineplex, which we love to go to. And we went and got our cups early. We were there like four hours early before anything else. So... We were dedicated fans. We wanted to get the new buckets and the new cups and stuff. People think I'm a big nerd. Say, hey, I'm a, I'm not a big nerd. I'm the head big nerd. Big nerd. So we can uh, get, all get past that point. So we went down there and we watched it Thursday and we watched it again Friday with Andrew's brother Jordan, and then we went and watched it again on Saturday with my brother-in-law Lloyd and sister and uh, all my other sisters and are pretty much all of them and. I loved it all three times that I watched it. That's the first time I've ever went Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to watch any movie in a row. So it was kind of a, a strange feeling. I think the, the uh, people at the movie theater thought I worked there because I was there so much. Which, you know, I did work at a theater at one time. So <laughs> besides that, we enjoyed it thoroughly all the way to the end. So we're, I'm going to try to give you my review of the movie. All right, we know that uh, this movie was directed by Ryan Johnson. And he did a tremendous job with with uh, all the people he had to follow, like George Lucas and J.J. Abrams and all the other ones uh, from the, the original trilogy. He did an awesome, awesome job with the characters, and he fleshed them out more. That's what I told Andrew, that he, that he uh, took them beyond where they were in Force Awakening and gave them a little bit of backstory, which I thought was really well done. Let me go into the actors. We'll uh, list them off here. Of course... He needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. Anyway, and Mark Hamill, if you're out there, I've loved your performance, loved your uh, career as an actor. I uh, think you're tremendous. But Mark Hamill played Luke Skywalker, and we had Carrie Fisher, of course, as uh, Princess Leia. Uh, Adam Driver as Kylo Ren. Daisy Ridley as Rey. John Boyega as Finn. Oscar Isaac played uh, Poe Dammer. Andy Serkis played Snoke. We won't go into the other ones. We won't get down. There's still a lot of people in this movie, but that's the main characters of the movie. And this was uh, set after the Fourth, the Fourth Awakening, so you know you know the situation that we're in. We were left off with her coming to the island and wanting Luke to help her. Well, we find out in some very hilarious scenes that Luke doesn't really want to train her because he's had a lot of uh, bad things happen to him and he doesn't want to uh, train a new form of Jedi. So all the trailer stuff was right when he said he wants the Jedi to end because he feels the Force will be there whether or not the Jedi are there or not. So I see both points of that and it, it was really cool there. I thought we were going to come in a situation where, you know, like an Empire Strikes Back, Luke goes down in the uh, uh, the hole in the swamp and he faces himself in the Darth Vader suit and he finds out he could if he didn't watch out he was going to become evil. So Daisy really kind of did the same thing on her island. With, she went down into the hole of the the, the dark side because 
on this island they had the light and the dark uh, came together. They kind of did that, but they put a little twist on it, and you didn't really get to, to see her showing that she was going to become evil. But it didn't give her any answers about her parents that she wanted either. And then people were all upset about she. They didn't find out she was related to the Emperor, or she was related to Snoke, or Luke Skywalker, or all these other characters. People all upset. I don't care. I didn't care whether she was related to them. And like I said, the Luke Skywalker bloodline... It's already been in the original trilogy, and we talked about it in the prequels. They were that was all done. I think it, you have to move on from that point. And I understand I'm a lover of the the four, five, and six, which I consider the one, two, and three of the movies because I watched them when I was nine years old when the first one came out in 1977. So you're not talking to somebody that don't care about the uh, the Star Wars franchise. I do, and I didn't like the the prequels. So I'm right with you, people. I love the Luke Skywalker stuff, but that was in 4, 5, and 6, and we have to face that. We got a new set of trilogy. I told my son, Andrew, this is your trilogy now. 7, 8, and 9 is going to be his trilogy for his age group. They're going to take the torch, and they're going to carry it on to their kids. Like I said, you're going to be telling your kids about 7, 8, and 9 like I told you about 4, 5, and 6. It's, it's what uh, the rite of passage for Star Wars fans there's still, I say there's people out there that watch one, two, or three and will pass that on too. I mean, whether you like them or not, which I didn't like them, you have your right to like them. I'm not saying you don't have your right to like them. I just didn't like them. But everybody, what I'm saying is everybody uh, has their, their trilogy. Anyway, to get back to the movie, it kind of, which I like the way it kind of went from one storyline and it jumped to another storyline. You didn't get bogged down with just her, her at the, uh, the island with Luke, the Ray character. You got to jump to Poe, and he was he had a lot of little one-liner stuff at the beginning of the movie I thought was really cool with the with the commander of the um, First Order. He had a really good joke there about not being able to be connected with him on the, the line. He's acting like he's uh, not being able to connect with him, and they did a really cool laugh with that. Everybody laughed in the theater. That, and, and I noticed with this one, they showed a lot more death. I'm not saying they didn't show it in the past ones. They showed what it took to be at war with the First Order. Like, even in that first scene where Paul Dammer was attacking the, the big ship there, uh, they named it something. I can't think of the name. Maybe I'll post it here, what the ship was called. And he wanted to destroy it, and Lael was trying to get him to pull back because they had already lost all their uh, bombers except for one. And they were able to destroy it, but the, the girl that was able to destroy it, she died too in it. So they lost a lot of people. And I, and I noticed in the movie they showed a lot of how when you're at war, how you lose a lot of good people, even though you're trying to break free from the First Order. But uh, it showed that war wasn't something that, uh, you know, you can walk away from. So I thought that was kind of cool the way they, they put that in into the storyline to show how uh, difficult it is to be at war. You have Princess Leia trying to teach Poe Dammer how to eventually you have to come back from the fight you can't lose your whole thing whole group of people fighting with you just to accomplish one thing and she was trying to tell poe that that's what she wanted she ends up you know demoting him because he didn't do what she told him to do to come back to the ship and it, i like the little lessons they had in there like that then you had finn which is wakes up from all of his uh injuries from the force awakens where he stabbed with the um, or cut down his back with the lightsaber from Kylo Ren. He wakes up and he's been in like a little incubation type thing and he's one of the first thing he wants to do is see and know where Ray is because you know he, there's a relationship there from the first one that that they kind of uh, alluded to. So you get to kind of get his storyline too and he meets up with the uh, uh, the girl Rose. Uh, I don't know what her name is. Um, maybe I'll post it up here. The actress but he meets up with her, and you get you get to go with the sense. You know, in The Force Awakens, he was always trying to run to get away. He didn't want to uh, face the First Order. He knew it was uh, suicide. So you, you kind of take, Rose kind of takes him on that journey. And they go off in a separate uh, top storyline where they're trying to see the, uh, when, when Princess Leia's group destroys the ship of the First Order, they go, uh, Princess Leia's ship goes into hyperspeed and gets away from him. But the, the First Order has some kind of tracking device and they follow her right back to her. 
there's a part where uh, Princess Leia is, um, the ship is blown up and she is ejected from the ship. And there's a lot of hoopla on the internet about how she's floating in space and she wakes up and she's able to use, because she's a Skywalker people. She's Luke's sister. So she has uh, enough force in her to be able to get back to the ship and save her life. She's still in a bad coma and everything, but she makes it. I hear all, oh, that's so ridiculous. She's out in space. She's dead. She can't breathe in space. People were talking about the force. We're talking about uh, different crazy themes in this movie. And I, that's the one thing you choose not to believe. If you can believe Luke can do all the stuff he can do in there and Snow can do all this stuff, Kylo Ren, you should be able to believe that she's got enough energy to be able to get back to the ship before she's dying. She, she doesn't quite, you know, she's still in a coma. She's like she's uh, a spring chicken when she makes it back there. So I don't see all the criticism of that scene. I think it was well done. I think it, uh, it they could have took the easy way out and just wrote her out of the whole story because she did pass away during after the filming of this. But they kept her and I, and because that was what the story called for. And I think I give them kudos for that. Uh, they think they did a very good job. Well, while she's incapacitated, there's another uh, general is Kentucky takes over, and that's when Poe has a clash with the new uh, lady that's taken over for Princess Leia to be able to. Uh, to run the organization, you know, they, they ain't gonna leave it to Poe because Poe, she, he's just supposed to blow stuff up. So, she is kind of like the bad guy towards Poe. So they do a really good character build around Poe about his being able to accept uh, his limitations. So they go through their little thing there on the ship. Laura Dern is the one that plays the character, uh, and she does a good job at it. Uh, they give you a kind of a misdirection with that storyline but it's really cool it plays off in the end but getting back to Finn there him and Rose are on the destroyer trying to um, this is before they get destroyed they go to a an alien planet where they're trying to find a person that's uh, gonna make uh, give them a code breaker to be able to get back into the the first order ship to be able to uh, and to turn off the the tracking device they have to get on there and find a certain code breaker at this casino type planet where they have like a, it looks like horse racing but it's different creatures racing that storyline i didn't love that storyline but i didn't hate it either i thought they kind of overdid it a little bit but i did like the what he learned while he was there they met the uh, del toro character and uh, the in the jail when they get put in jail in there and they kind of find out i like the way you know he the Del Toro character, he's trying to uh, play both sides. Kind of like Finn wanting to get away. So Finn kind of learns from him that he's telling, Del Toro's telling the Finn character, hey, don't pick a side and be free. So you, you get little pieces of nuggets of each one of these little things in each of the little stories, like with the Luke and the Ray and the, the Finn and the Rose and the Poe and the General. They, they're all learning their lessons. And I think that was really cool the way they put that all together. And they had their own little missions going on. So you never had a dull moment. Action is just always around the corner. They did great, great action with that. And then they kind of, uh, with the Ray and, and Kylo, they're trying to make you think about them possible joining together. And they, that's where me and Andrew got our, our, our facts mistaken in our, our spoiler review. But this time... All these stories are made to promote the new cast. The people are upset because Luke wasn't in it as much as they thought, or Luke didn't do what they thought, because Luke had a, had a weak moment with Kylo Ren when he's explaining why uh, Kylo turned on him. He kind of doesn't fudge the truth. He just kind of says that Kylo, he went to stop Kylo from uh, when he was asleep. It was going to stop him from uh, going evil. He kind of told, kind of sugarcoat a little bit and act like he was, you know, an innocent thing. But actually, what Kylo had told Ray is that Luke came there and he was all vengeful and he was wanting to destroy him. But Luke did admit that when he was standing over him, he saw, he looked into the soul of Kylo Ren and he saw all the evil that he was going to do. And he just thought for a split second, maybe I could kill him and we'd never have all this happen. And at that time, when he ignites his 
saber, he's like, oh no, I, I should have done this. And he, before he could turn it off, uh, Kylo wakes up and thinks he's going to kill him, which both sides of their story kind of makes sense, you know, in their own point of view. And he ends up destroying the temple and taking other uh, Jedi members with him. They'll be able to, you know, that's what ended up happening through their relationship. And that's why Luke feels so bad and he doesn't want to go back because he feels like he's created Kylo. I think they did a very good a very good job with that. It made a sense why Luke was brought where he was at and what he was doing. And they had a great cameo with, with Yoda in it. And he's telling him all the storylines about, hey, you're just supposed to pass your knowledge on them. You're going to make mistakes. Failure is a great learning uh, th a thing for students. You can learn a lot from failure and uh, folly and all this. He's telling him, you, you just have to pass on your knowledge, and you did that. And it wasn't all the stuff about the books that were there. It was about uh, what, the, what you taught your students. So I thought that was a really good lesson even for Luke to learn as old as a master as he is, that uh, Yoda had to remind him of that. So I thought those were really cool scenes. I thought they did really good with that type of uh, storytelling. Everything came back to a central meaning. All the way through the movie, this was playing out. When Del Toro ended up selling out Finn and Rose at the end, that helped Finn understand that this is the way it's going to be. You can't just keep running. You just can't. You've got to pick a side. You've got to be either for the good side or the bad. You can't be neutral. And I thought that was a really cool storyline that it, it made around Finn and, and his uh, uh, coming of uh, understanding of where he needed to be in the thing. And so with Poe. When Poe was on the ship and he, and he mutinied the ship against the general, the Laura Dern character, and he uh, gets in there and he's trying to over He thinks that she's going to like she's a traitor and all this and then Princess Leia comes in there and shoots him stuns him and tells him no that's what their whole plan was because they wanted to sneak out in their little ships because the First Order is following the Princess uh, ship and they're blowing up everything that runs out of fuel they're, they're going to be able to slip out without them seeing them and that's what she was doing the Laura Dern character and Poe was so gun ho that he needed to know what was going on that he didn't sit there and listen and understand and, and respect his uh his generals above him, and, and that's what she was trying to teach. Princess Leia was trying to teach Poe, and that's how he learned through the movie. I thought that was really cool on that part, too. And so with Ray, they Ray goes, uh, leaves and thinks she's going to turn Kylo to the good side. So she confronts Snoke, and this is one of the best battles of, uh, of lightsaber battles I've seen in a Star Wars movie. Not saying it outdoes you know anything in four five and six i just think it was super cool because it was two people fighting together you see kylo and and ray fighting together as a team and you think wow if these two were actually on the same side they would be unstoppable and that's what kylo wanted you find out the snoke was bridging their minds together and that's why they saw each other from the from the island and and on the destroyer with Kylo, he was trying to let Ray think that Ray could turn Kylo, and it was not possible, as Snoke said. I thought that was really cool. They and the the way the it showed how powerful Snoke was, and how uh, you think Snoke's uh, so sure that uh, Kylo would never turn, and which he didn't turn, but he did turn on Snoke and kill him with the lightsaber that he had a raise Snoke had a raise and that was a super scene when her hand goes up and it comes through Snoke's body where it's stabbed into him where Kylo has used the force to turn the the lightsaber on to stab into uh, Snoke's torso and then it all uh Ray puts up her hand and then it comes flying toward her the sword and then Kylo and Ray stand up and it's like slow motion for a second and they're starting to kick back with the with all the security type guards the guards around the snoke are fighting them they're all in red uh, garb and it just is such a cool fight scene of both characters fighting and throwing their lightsaber at each other you see ray jerk up the big reds uh, the lightsaber up of, of kylo's and start kicking butt with that and even uh, kylo is super cool in his fights and it's just awesome from start to finish the way he Ray takes her lightsaber and drops it and cuts off the thing, uh, the, one of the guard's legs and head, and then she throws it to Kylo, and he's 
he like is in a chokehold by the guard and when he grabs it he turns it on and shoots the the beam right through the lightsaber beam through the guard's head it's super cool scenes love that action loved it but when, when you think they're going to get together kylo is wanting her to join the dark side and he wants everybody to be killed on the transport that's Leia's and is trying to get to this uh, base on this planet and he's like let's let the past die kill it if you have to join me and we'll rule the world we'll rule the whole galaxy Ray can't do it and they have an epic fight over the sword of over Luke's lightsaber and it breaks uh, all this time that this is going on Finn and Rose are caught, and uh, Phasma is in it, and they do totally do nothing with Phasma. They just bring her to the very end. I thought when we saw the first one, they said Phasma was going to be big in this one. They just barely used her in it, and I think that's bad the way they did her. I'm hoping she's still alive in part three to be able to have more of a part. She deserves more of a part, so just march it in and say a few words, and then, which she did fight. She did fight Finn. But anyway, when uh, Del Toro takes the money and leaves Finn and Rose to die for uh, Phasma to cut, cut their heads off by the stormtroopers. But the woman on the ship, the Laura Dern character, the, the general, she sees that uh, the Del Toro character gave up the resistance knowledge that all these, the Princess Leia and them was going to get on uh, evacuation ships and go to the planet, the old planet below them where they had an old base. For the rebels and he tells them that so they start shooting the the the, the first order ships start shooting those transports killing everybody on them one by one when this happens laura dern's character turns the big ship around that the rebels were on and she goes to light speed in this ship and when she hits that button the first order just figures out what she's going to do she shoots that ship plumb through their ship the first order ship and for a split second, it's total silence in the theater. And you just see ships are splitting in two. <laughs> Big flash of light. And then everybody's like, what the? And I'm like, what the heck? That is so awesome. My mind completely blown to seeing this ship just go straight through the whole First Order and destroy every ship they had. And then you hear the sound. <laughs> and all the, the laser and lights it's just like a total cool moment i wish it could have been princess leia behind that she, her in that ship would have been an ultimate send-off for princess leia she her sacrifices in her life for the whole rebellion and destroying it would have been totally cool but still with a cool scene if they would have done that i would have topped everything off i would have probably jumped up and cheered because i was already clapping anyway that scene happened that saves Finn and Rose for a little while. That's when they wake up on the uh, the ship and everything's burning and the uh, uh, the first order ship and they start to get up and Phasma's coming up there and she, Finn has to face Phasma. They have a fight. Uh, Phasma pretty much beats him, knocks him over the edge. And when she turns around to fight Rose, Finn's there, he smacks her in the head with one of those uh, batons that the stormtrooper had. She falls down and calls him scum. He said, rebel scum, Finn says. So, so totally cool lines. He had a lot of cool lines in this movie. But that was really cool the way he added that there. And she falls through the uh, floor of the ship and she goes through flame. And everybody thinks she's dead. I don't believe she's dead. She still had her uniform on and everything. But when he hit her, it knocked the, a hole in her, in her uh, helmet. And you could see her eye. Total cool imagery. I love cool imagery in movies. That was totally cool imagery. I got chills from those scenes. He, uh, Ryan Johnson did a great job with that type of stuff. Rose and Finn get helped by BB-8 and a big old, one of those walker type things and they uh, get them off the ship. They get back to the planet because when all that happened, that makes Princess Leia's group of band of rebels get to the planet and they're in a big bunker, an old bunker that they used to have back in the day. So they're in there planning their next thing they can do because the First Order is still hot on their tail. At that time, Ray and and uh, has got away from uh, after the big explosion on the First Order ship when her and Kylo was fighting over Luke Skywalker's sword and it broke. She gets away. Kylo's there. He takes over for Snoke, becomes the supreme leader. They go down to the planet where Princess Leia has took out the, the remaining rebels, which is running out of rebels. 
down to the, the, the planet's surface, and I'll put the planet's name here because I can't think of the planet's name off, off my top of my head. And they get down there, and it comes to an ultimate showdown where Finn has finally learned that he's going to fight to save the rebellion. And you have Poe, which is doing his understanding of uh, being a leader. They go against these, uh, like the walkers from the Empire Strikes Back. And this is where Andrew said it kind of felt like Empire Strikes Back because they had the little tunnel and they had the walkers, which were a little bit modified for this movie, but they still did the same purpose of the walkers coming. They had a, the First Order had a big, humongous uh, gun type cannon type thing. They were going to, because the bunker had a huge door on the front of it for the rebels and they're, they're going to have to crack that open. Poe gets together a group of uh, Rose and Finn and a few other uh, rebellious people, rebellion people to be able to get in these makeshift little ship for the planet to fight those. They go into that battle and there's another great battle with that. You think Finn's at the end of all the battle, uh, before the battle's almost over, Finn's like with like Poe, he's like, hey, we need to destroy, we need to finally destroy this thing. And Poe's like, no, we need to pull back, they're gonna kill us all, you need to quit. So you see Finn trying to take his, uh, he's finally figured out he's gonna die for the rebellion. The music started playing like he has finally accepted his fate. Uh, Rose kicks her ship, knocks him out of the way. They crash right before, you know, the, the walkers. Finn gets out and tries to save Rose. And Rose, he's like saying, Rose, why did you do that? And she said, I saved you, dummy. And he said, but we need to destroy them, uh, the First Order. You don't uh, fight for what you hate. You fight for what you love. And then by the time the gun shoots from the First Order and, and blows up the a hole in the the big doors a bunker and she reaches up and she kisses him and she collapses and you don't know if she's alive or dead so they have punctured the door and then like Trolls Princess Leia inside the bunker and she's like we fought to the end we did all we can this is that's all we can do because they sent out distress signals when they were in the bunker and nobody came by that time who comes in Luke Skywalker walks in the door and he tells Sprint Leia that he can't save that he's sorry he didn't come to help her sooner, that he can't save uh, Kylo, and she said she understands because she felt like she's lost Kylo long ago. Her son's not inside Kylo anymore. So that gives uh, Luke the go-ahead to just get rid of Kylo. I love the interaction between C-3PO and Luke. He... Uh, C-3PO says, Master Luke, and Luke winks at him. Really cool scene. Earlier in the movie, he has uh, Luke has a cameo. He gets on the Falcon. He uh, gets Han Solo's dice off of the, the Falcon, and he runs into uh, R2-D2, and that's really cool. Brought back a lot of memories from the, the, the first one where they played the Obi-Wan Kenobi, Help Me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, R2-D2 played it to get Luke to come back, and Luke said, that's a cheap trick. But I thought that was so super cool to see that. It, it just brought back floods of memory of me being a child and loving that, those scenes. But anyway, Luke, it goes out to to face uh, Kylo in front of all those walkers, in front of the whole First Order at the doorstep, huge machines. As he goes out, Finn drags Rose in, and, and she's not dead, and he's like, take care of her, you know, and he's like, he wants to go out... Finn wants to go and help Luke to be able to fight the whole First Order. And, and uh, Poe says, no, no, he's doing this for a reason. He wants us to live. He wants us to be the spark for the rebellion to burn down the First Order. So Poe has learned his lesson, too, just like Finn learned his lesson. That about being a leader, and to be able to save the people that you have. You're not supposed to kill every, every person you got just to win a battle. The story comes full circle, and I love that. Well, getting back to Luke, he's out there, and Kylo sees him. He's in one of the walkers, and he says, fire every gun we have at that man. And they, sh they shoot a big bomb at Luke, and then all of a sudden, every, every walker, every ship, everything starts shooting right where Luke's at, and it's this constant barrage, and the music is playing super, super scene, and like it's just like totally destroying like everything. They're, just, they're putting every bit of ammunition they have into killing this one man, Luke Skywalker. Finally, the, uh, the second in command says, 
stop, stop, stop it. And he stops him. He said, you reckon you, you reckon you got him? And about that time, uh, one of the uh, guys on the uh, walker says, sir. And when he said that, we know Luke's still alive. Shows the dust and the, and the smoke clear. And here comes Luke out. And he does the most coolest thing ever in movie history. He takes his hand and just breaks off the debris off of his outfit and the crowd went crazy. I was like, go get him, Luke, go get him in the theater when I thought saw it for the first time. I mean, I even clapped. <laughs> so then Kylo gets down and he faces Luke one-on-one. -on -one. He says, did you come here to save my soul? And Luke says, no. So you know the fight is on. Kylo lights up his sword and makes his stance and you hear Luke's kick in. I mean, chill bumps came up. I mean, it was so cool. They do a, their swords hit together and uh, it's just super cool the way that happens and they just like kind of fight and you do a, they do like a matrix scene where Kylo swings at Luke and he bends all the way backwards and the Kylo's uh, lightsaber just misses his face. That's an awesome scene. And about that time, Kylo says, you know, I'm going to destroy the First Order. I'm going to kill everybody you love. I'm going to do all this. And he's telling all this stuff he's going to do. And he says, I'm, I'm, and the Jedi will be extinct. And Luke says, everything you just said was wrong. He says, the, the battle is not over. The war has just begun. And I will not be the last Jedi because... Poe has took all the, the people in the back of the bunker where the, the animals are going out of, the, out of the rocks and they're stuck back there, but Ray finds them in the Millennium Falcon and goes down there and moves all the rocks off of them with the force. That's when he's saying, I will not be the last Jedi. She is moving all the rocks. And you get the embrace of Finn and, and Ray that, you know, they finally get to be together and he hugs her. They take everybody onto the Falcon and about that time, uh, Luke turns off his sword and he said, if you kill me in anger, I'll become more powerful than you can ever imagine and you'll never get rid of me. That Kylo comes running and just slices through Luke and he turns around and Luke's still standing there without any holes in his body. And Kylo kind of looks weird and he goes over and he sticks his sword through, through uh, Luke and Luke's just smiling at him. And uh, he pulls it out, and you see Luke on the island doing like a, <laughs> whatever his power is, he's got his eyes closed, and he's like floating in there, and he's like projecting himself to that planet. So what kind of power do you think Luke is the most powerful Jedi ever? Who could do that, project his whole body across the space and fight another human being? And he looks at Kylo, and he says, and it's so cool the way he says, See you around, kid. And he disappears and vanishes. And he's back on the island and he just flops down and he falls under the rock. Luke does, and is like in total exhaustion of being able to pull this off to be able to fight Kylo. And he's like all upset because he runs into the bunker and everybody's gone. They're on the Falcon and they're gone. And he's like, I don't know what to think and then it shows the island again and it shows Luke getting up all feeble and everything like that and he looks out in the sunset and he just vanishes just like Obi-Wan did when Darth Vader hit him with a sword just like Yoda did when he was uh, dying on Dagobah when Luke was there in Return of the Jedi he just vanishes and his only was left was his, his outfit and it floats off off the cliff and so Luke dies but I'm sure he'll be back as a force ghost total cool total awesome did not people hate that i thought it was great i thought it was genius luke can't be i mean he can be back as the force goes but he can't lead this rebellion on he has been in his four five and six this is him pushing the new cast i told andrew he's pushing the new cast ahead to get to, to the new jedis the new rebels all that the new leaders and that's what this movie was about. And people kind of didn't understand that or something. That's just what the movie was telling you. It's not a movie that sucks. This is a great movie. It was well done. It had a complete story. They show uh, Kylo trying to like, in his mind, he can see Ray putting what's left of the rebellion fits on the Millennium Falcon. That's how many rebels are left. 
and she's like standing at the door of the Falcon and he's like seeing her through his mind and he's like in his mind wanting her to come to him and she just closes the Falcon door and speeds off. And then you see uh, Finn put a blanket over Rose while she's in there and she's uh, still out of it. And you see that relationship kept going on. You see Poe actually introduce himself to Ray, which I thought they had met in the uh, Force Awakens, but I was wrong, <laughs> evidently. But, and then it just, uh, I'm trying to think if that was the last scene. Then that, that shows them kind of like going off, and I thought that was going to be the last scene because it's got Princess Leia on the Landing Falcon, and she's talking about hope. They have hope now and everything, but that goes to a dark screen, and it shows the uh, poor stable boy and stuff from the uh, the planet where they Finn and Rose went to, where they raced those uh, animals. And he like goes outside, and he's got a broom, and he's looking up, and he's got a little rebel ring that Rose gave him, where it shows the rebel symbol. And he looks up at the stars and sees something uh, go light speed, and he takes up his broom like it's a lightsaber. So you, it goes off, and you know that uh, the the Jedi live, that the new uh, rebels will be coming. So it was just like a great, great movie. I don't know how people misunderstand it. I don't know what they wanted, but that movie was really, really good. I put it ahead of my Force Awakens. My order, I got uh, Episode Four, New Hope. Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, The Last Jedi, and The Force Awakens is my great uh, order for my the Star Wars films. I, I know. Give me what you thought of the movie. Did did you uh, dislike it? I'm not got anything bad to say to you. If you didn't like it, I'm just telling you the reason that I loved it, and try to hope that you can understand why I loved it. Because it 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 you can't like I told Andrew, you got to to move on the younger group of rebels and stuff have to take over it's no longer the Han, luke skywalker princess leia story star wars it's moved on to the finn the ray the kylo the all them the poe all of those it's their story now they are they're the young guns that's going to take this to the next level because he's still got another movie with this this is going to be andrew's trilogy my son's trilogy I had my trilogy, and I'm glad that they gave respect to the original trilogy people like Han Solo and Princess Leia and Luke, and they, give their, they gave them great uh, dignity in their scenes. And I think they did a very good job. They didn't just try to trash the pups in the past. They, they accepted it in, and they built, built upon it to make another universe for the, uh, the next generation. And that's why I loved it. Yeah, they could have told the story of Luke, you know, through the next three. But I think they doing this, they passed it on. And I think they did a great job. Tell me what you think. Leave your comments there. I know this video is running long, but I love the movie. Uh, go watch it if you haven't watched it. Uh, I'd say you've already watched it because this is a spoiler review. Uh, and tell me what you think. I just wanted to, uh, to make this review to, to tell you my views on it. So remember, the Bad Raven is your friend, and we're going to let you go, and we'll talk at you later. And may the Force be with you, and goodbye.